the chapter in which Abram leaves his father's home, moves to Egypt, then he and his sister wife give the Pharaoh of Egypt a sexually transmitted disease. Stick around. Protect yourself from Abram's crotch cricket curse by reaching out and clicking that subscribe button, then hitting that little notification bell. Keep your jiggly bits safe, my friends. Now, on with the show. I have to be honest, these next few chapters which contain the story of Abram slash Abraham are some of my favorite chapters in the Old Testament. In case you're unaware, the Abram I'm talking about is the same Abram who is considered the father of the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. To catch you up, Abram is a direct descendant of Noah, who is of course about 10 generations removed from Adam. Abram, or Abraham as he's later known, is considered the father of these faiths because in subsequent chapters he'll go on to make the first covenant with God, securing the, the position of God's chosen people for the ancient Hebrews. In the last chapter, we learned of the incestuous nature of his family. One of Abram's brothers married his own niece, and Abram married his own half-sister. In later chapters, Lot, Abram's nephew, will go on to have incestuous sex and subsequently children with his own daughters. So far, 11 chapters into the Book of Death, and every major family or hero is in some way in an incestuous relationship, either implied or directly stated. Who did Cain and Abel have children with to populate the earth? Either their mother or sisters that Adam and Eve Produced later. Who did the children of Noah breed with to repopulate the earth? He had three sons who had one wife each. At best, it was first cousin on first cousin after that. Then we get to Abram and his family, and the Bible directly tells us they married within their own family. Abram married his own sister, and his brother Nahor married his own niece. By our modern notions, marital incest is not generally something you go around bragging about, let alone writing down in a holy text. But the Bible makes no effort to hide it. Of course, scientifically, we know the harms of inbreeding, such as physical deformities and mental handicaps, and there is absolutely no reason to believe incest wasn't the norm for the entire lineage, from Adam right down to Abram. So what kind of quality offspring could Abram possibly have been? Hmm? Now, on to chapter 12. This chapter opens with God telling Abram to leave his father's house and that God will make Abram a great nation. So the spry young Abram picks up his bride Sarai and his nephew Lot, and they toddle off into the desert. Well, He's not really spry so much. Genesis 12 verse 4 says he was 75 years old when he left his father's household. And in Genesis chapter 17, we learn that Sarai is about 10 years younger than Abram. So we'll pin her at around 65 years old when they leave. They traveled to the land of Canaan, to the great tree of Moriah, then onto the hills east of Bethel. Then they set out for Negev, but a famine forced them down to Egypt. Now, here's where things get really interesting. As they were about to enter Egypt, he says, Genesis 12 verses 11 through 13, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When these Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but let you live. Say you are my sister so that I will be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. Wait, what? Yeah, based on what we know so far, Sarai is at least 65 years old and bred from the same incestuous stock as Abram, because they're brother and sister, right? And considering all the hard desert miles she's bound to have had on her and the lack of any modern form of dentistry, etc., I seriously doubt she's the oil of Olay model type of 65 plus. And yet here he is telling her that she's so beautiful, he'll get killed if she claims to be his wife. So she needs to pretend to be his sister. Really? That's just crazy. So that's how it was done in Egypt back in the day. If you saw a hot gilf passing through the town, the general rule was to murder her elderly husband and take her a prize. Hmm. Well, maybe. Genesis 12, 14 and 15. When Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that Sarai was a very beautiful woman. And when Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh and she was taken to his palace. Okay, so this dilapidated desert daisy was so beautiful that the Pharaoh's men saw her and were so taken by her that they felt the need to literally go tell the Pharaoh. And of all the young and beautiful women of Egypt, the Pharaoh ends up going for this gorgeous goat herding granny. Right. But you know what? Apparently it paid off. Genesis 12 verse 16 says, He, the Pharaoh, treated Abram well for her sake, and Abram acquired sheep and cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants, and camels. So what do you think the Bible author means by for her sake? For her beauty or for her vagina? I find it highly unlikely in such a savage land as Egypt is being portrayed that the Pharaoh gave all that wealth just so he could simply look upon her beauty. And if all he wanted to do was gaze upon her grain granny goods, he could have done that whether she was Abram's 
sister, wife, brother, it, 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 that, that doesn't matter, right? To add to the dripping misogyny, notice the reward doesn't go to her. It goes to Abram. She's used as little more than a streetwalker, and all the wealth goes to her pimp. Uh, I mean, husband. I mean, it, it sure looks like Abram is literally pimping his wife out to the Pharaoh. Is the lesson to be learned here that you can give your sister wife to another man as a method of acquiring wealth? Great moral grounding for a religion. Imagine basing your religion on indecent proposal 2000 BC. So if before seeing this video I told you that the father of the Abrahamic religion literally whored out his sister wife to the pharaoh of Egypt for some coin cattle and slaves, would you have believed me? Well, here it is. He claims it was out of fear for his life, but it sure seems more like it was a business transaction to me. And didn't he have the power of God to protect him? He was already talking to God. No power there? Anyway, and now my friends, as if to bolster the notion Pharaoh was knocking boots with Sarai, the part you've all been waiting for, Genesis 12 verse 17 says, But the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram's wife, Sarai. That's right. Sarai gave Pharaoh an STD, which he proceeded to give to his wives and around his household. As you can imagine, the Pharaoh was pissed. Verses 18 through 20, So Pharaoh summoned Abram. What have you done to me, he said. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister so that I took her to be my wife. Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. Then Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men, and they sent him on his way with his wife and everything he had. Notice, despite Pharaoh's anger, he didn't ask for anything back. Instead, he told him to take everything and go, because that's what you do when somebody gives you the cooties. You don't want anything from them. Take your shit and go. And so, you know, if Sarai had an STD, then Abram had it. And like Al Capone during decades of syphilis riddled adult patient, Abram starts talking to an imaginary creature and eventually starts mutilating himself by cutting off the end of his dick. A trick he learned while they were in Egypt, by the way. But let's not jump too far ahead, okay? We'll get to that part soon enough. Hmm. Fodder for another chapter. So far though, everything the Bible has had to say about Abram reflects very poorly about his character and his lineage. Yet this horror of a man is a prophet of God? Yep. But not of a kind, loving, gentle, merciful God. No. But this is exactly the kind of prophet you'd expect from the evil god monster of Abraham and its book of death. Remember, avoid getting the prophet plague on your crotch critter by clicking that subscribe button and hitting that little notification bell. If you like what I do and you'd like to support my cause, follow the link in the description below to my Patreon and find a tier that works for you. Thank you and take care.